Hello, good morning, good evening, and uh, good afternoon, depending on where you are. My name is Raghav Vashisht. Uh, I'm from the Atoti community team. I'm working as a data scientist with the Atoti community team. Uh, so as you all know, we are today here to discuss uh, the session on Atoti and Excel. So we have like two main uh, players here, Atoti and Excel, like just a bit of a heads up. Mm, this is not like Atoti versus Excel. This session is not about, you know, comparing the pros and cons of the two. We Here we will be simply focusing on, you know, how you can leverage both Excel and Atoti to basically get the best out of your data or to get the best out of your, you know, existing uh, data values. So maybe, you know, we can start off straight away with talking about Excel. Uh, so what is Excel? Excel is love. Like, you know, we all have this familiar bias towards Excel that we, I think I learned in school that, uh, you know, what Microsoft Word is for anything to do with text, Excel is for anything to do with data. And personally, I'm a very big fan of Microsoft Excel. And I think until today, one of the biggest benefit of using Microsoft Excel is its primary function, where you have this ability to organize, you know, various amounts of data into a very orderly, logical, familiar spreadsheet kind of manner, which comes like very intuitively to us. And with the data is organized so neatly in Excel, it is very easy to analyze, digest the data, create various graphs and do different uh, representation. And, you know, this doesn't really surprise me, honestly, that when you actually go to internet, for example, this was my LinkedIn feed today morning. It is full of feeds with, you know, Excel, how to use Excel, tips and tricks for Excel, all those kind of things. And we all love Excel, like, you know, across the board, like from uh, analysts to the head of an organization, everyone is familiar with Excel and they want to do something with Excel. Uh, having said that, Excel has its own, you know, some of the limitations or, you know, some of the shortcomings of Excel, which makes our experience with Excel not that great. So first of all, like, I think this is one meme I just saw and I thought like we all can relate to it. When it comes to handling big data or like, you know, huge amount of data, Excel becomes, uh -huh. so this is like, you know, a very universal problem with Excel that, you know, Excel cannot handle very big amount of data sets. Uh, there are, there have been, you know, concerns about data security in Excel. For example, like if multiple users are accessing like Excel, uh, they might have, you know, issues who can access which kind of data. And then if those data set can actually be, you know, accessed by different users, if they are even not supposed to have access to those uh, data sets. And finally, you know, due to its like basic uh, organization, Excel is not very popular among the people having a agile business, agile development kind of a model building practice. So, uh, you know, we have Excel pros and cons. So let's uh, talk about a bit about Atoti. Uh, I'll probably move my side to the slide and then I have some content about Atoti. So Atoti, as we all know, like Atoti, I guess like uh, just to give you a quick uh, introduction, what Atoti is, Atoti is like a free BI analytics platform, which can, you know, turbocharge your normal looking Jupyter notebook into a powerful data visualization tool. It has its own BI app with an intuitive drag and drop widgets, uh, shareable dashboards, vertif analysis and a lot more to do. Right, so uh, starting off with the, like there, in addition to that, like there are some more components to Atoti. So starting off with the uh, security feature of Atoti, like, you know, with Atoti, you can have a security configuration to control access on a application level, dashboard level, data level, so that, you know, only those users who are entitled to have access to certain data sets, they access it and not, is not open to everyone. And hence the data set is not able to access, you know, everyone to in the board. Now, when this happens, what will happen is that uh, only those users which own the data or which are supposed to have access to it will be able to access to it. When you do any kind of analysis with Atoti, what happens is and Atoti reads all the data in memory and perform aggregations on the fly, which means your golden source of data remains always intact. Not a user, not any operation, not any kind of analysis will make it any changes to it by accident or intentionally. And with Atoti, you know, you can be sure that the ultimate source of data is safe and secure. So that was about the security features of Atoti. Uh, moving on, you know, the uh, data volume which Atoti can handle. With Atoti, you know, the data process are being processed in memory 
and you can easily like in my personal experience i have handled like millions of rows on my personal machine and up to several terabytes of data on the cloud so that's like uh, the handling you know the with big data coming in we all have lots amount of data coming in atoti can definitely handle that finally a uh, dashboard sharing like this is one of the features about atoti you can create an interactive dashboard share it with people in your system and then you know allow you people to use customizable uh, ui and then make changes to it in addition to that you can create various scenarios and what if analysis and what not so uh, we have had both atoti and excel uh, you know let's uh, go straight to the uh, topics today's main notebook so what uh, let me move my side to the side again i hope you can now see the jupiter notebook yeah so i think you can now so today what we will try to do is i have this uh, microsoft excel workbook i will try to you know do some migration of this uh, workbook into a similar looking dashboard in the toti we will see you know how to do it the pros and cons of doing it and how a like dashboard like this in a toti can be so much more interactive easy to share and so much more secure as compared to your uh, old uh, microsoft workbook uh, microsoft excel workbook sorry uh before i start what i would like to show you is the workbook which we are using so this is like a excel a workbook which are using we have made a dashboard into it this is like a normal dashboard nothing fancy about it um it has like a chart so just to give you some idea it is about the budget of a company where you have income and expenses you have the budget totals estimated and actual values and you do have the difference between the estimated and actual values we do have a bar chart here and finally we do have like some kind of deep dive into the top 5 operating expenses what what is the total percentage they have and the reduction they do have uh just like most excel dashboards like these dashboard is based on you know referencing referencing cells from other the other sheets and just to show those sheets like these are the different sheets where you have you have like you know various internal calculations within like for example i have a column here like the column e being hidden here which we can use oops sorry yeah so you can have like you know unhide columns so there is like a cell referencing based as excel calculation i won't go into the detail of this kind of calculation we do have another sheet which pertains to the personal expenses and finally we do have the operating expenses sheet what we have done is we have sort of you know a uh, calculated two different sheets from here which is about the budget type budget subtype uh, categories and estimated like estimated and actual values for each of those pertinent budget categories and we will you know use this to in atoti to basically create a dashboard like this so that's our goal for today that you know migrating this kind of dashboard excel kind of dashboard into atoti uh, those who are familiar with excel they know that you know to go from something like this so this takes some amount of calculation you know creating different hidden columns referencing cells here and there and i won't go into those details just a heads up what we will do is we will try to create something like this from this but using atoti okay so let's get started with the notebook oops sorry yeah now i think you can see the notebook so uh that's like and just to you know sort of complete the circle a quick overview you know of our today's class what we will be you know covering is that we'll be do the migration of excel workbook into adoti we will be also performing some scenario simulations on the excel workbook data in addition to the 15% reduction scenario which we just saw finally uh, if uh, you know we will be connecting excel to adoti cube so i mentioned that you know with adoti you have this uh, safety feature data safety feature data security feature what when what we can try to do is we can try and create a excel with a cube in atoti so this will permit users to you know have that peace of mind about the about having that intact golden source of truth plus the familiarity of excel so you have best of both the worlds and that's what we are trying to achieve here today uh and finally if time permits we will try to cover up on this so i will show you that how you can link excel to atoti and then how making changes in a excel workbook in real time or you know augmented changes will actually change the or update the atoti dashboard in real time okay uh that's about it like these are the two pages like so that's first we will you know that's the fun part of this class which will be you know translating this 
dashboard into a Toti. And secondly, we'll try to include the extended data set. So we'll have the data, we'll try to extend it by certain exchange and we'll see how that reflects changes in the Toti dashboard. What we will not cover uh, in this particular session is like, you know, I go with the presumption that you are familiar tad bit about a Toti. You know how to install a Toti. You have some idea about creating and manipulating hierarchies and level. And you have some idea about, you know, creating aggregations in a Toti. Even if you don't, like, don't worry. We do have a lot of master classes, a lot of tutorials and guides to, you know, uh, start from the level zero with the Toti. Uh, on this topic, I would like to take a slight deviation. I would like to, you know, give you a quick uh, intro to our YouTube pages. So we have like a YouTube page where we have made various tutorials, trips, tricks, uh, videos. We, you can also find our previous master classes on the YouTube. You can always, you know, go to the Toti website. We do have a lot of uh, guides, articles, notebooks we have published. And finally, if you are like actually doing hands on a Toti, you can refer to our documentation and then, you know, search those particular functions which can help you achieve goals. Finally, if you're looking some, for some ideas to create, what you can do is you can go to our notebook gallery and then, uh, you know, you can uh, browse through different use cases based on their, uh, you know, industry based on the Atoti features and everything. Uh, you will get link, you will get links to these uh, use cases. Uh, my colleague Hetal, who is helping us with the live chat here today, she will be posting those links to in the chat and you can you know feel free to access those links whenever you want. Perfect. So let's get started. Uh, what we will do is we will simply uh, just like most Python libraries, we will import Atoti into the Python notebook. We will create a session. So session is basically a playground where, you know, you have the queue when everything is built in that particular session. If the session is being closed, everything you have done is lost. But here we are using uh, pertinent sessions. So we store the session being created and hence, like, you know, we will not lose anything. So what I will do is I will load the Excel and Toti CSV file, the file I showed you, which was the last tab of the Excel workbook. And we will be sort of building on top of it. As you can see here, we have the budget type, budget subtype the categories, estimated and actual values. Okay, so let's create the cube from this table we just have loaded. And if you can see, like that's the first thing to do. Basically, you have the uh, budget type, budget subtype as string and estimated and actual values as the integers, right? Now, what happens like first objective for us is to basically create a bar chart like this. How we can create a bar chart like this? Uh, to do anything in Ototi, like, you know, you need the Atoti playground. We simply can do session.visualize. As soon as I will run this session.visualize, you will see uh, Atoti site has been, you know, popped up in my Jupyter notebook. And this has given me an access to a very interactive and powerful tool, which can help me, you know, draw various kind of visualization, deep dive using pivot tables, tree tables, normal tables, find KPIs and whatnot. Uh, just a quick hint, like, you know, this in, in itself is a big topic in data visualization, sharing widgets in Atoti. We are not going into the details of that. I go with the assumption that you have at least some familiarity. And of course, we will see how to create a visualizations in Atoti. So here we are, what we're trying to do, as you can see, it's, it's a bar chart. So what we will do is I will select uh, maybe clustered columns because these look like a clustered column to me. We do have estimated actual values and we do have income and expenses. So in my measures, I see actual dot sum and I should also see the estimated dot sum. So these are the estimated and actual values. And then what I will do is I will split these by budget type. Uh, we are there, but I think we need to separate these things depending on the estimated and actual values. There you go. You, we have the estimated and actual values. Maybe if I flip it, you will have estimated first, actual values first. And then, uh, you know, just to make an exact copy of the above bar chart, what we can do is we can right click on this. We can simply sort, currently it is being sorted ascendingly. We can simply sort it by descendingly on the actual dot sum and voila. You do have a exact similar graph. You will see the numbers, they match. And uh, just remember like those familiar with Excel, they can definitely relate to it that creating this kind of visualization from raw data in Excel will take a whole lot of calculations. But with Atoti, this is very simple. Once you load your data in cube, Atoti does the magic for you. It figures out the measures and levels and whatnot. And then you just have to drag and drop to get the exact KPIs as demanded by the business. 
Now, in order to complete the dashboard, we do have the second part. Uh, I'll take a quick pause. Uh, if you have any questions, like, you know, feel free to uh, write them in the chat and I'll be happy to answer. And then Hetal is also there to support you with those questions. Yeah. Okay, uh, going back to the uh, second part, which was about having this kind of a pivot table where we do have the income expenses and estimated and actual values and then difference of estimated actual values and the balance between the income and expenses. So to get uh, something like this, what we have to do is again <laughs> session dot visualize and this time uh, instead of, you know, using a columns, what we can simply have is we can have a pivot table. So once you have the pivot table here again, I need the actual dot sum estimated dot sum values and I will, uh, you know, uh, each row is basically the budget type. So I'll put each row as the budget type and then there you go. So you can see like we have something, something close to the above table. Like, of course, there is some work needed to be done in this particular table. So we have like, you know, expenses, incomes, we do have estimated and actual values. But if you see, instead of here, we do have the total, but we should have actually had the difference between these two values. And we do need a difference column between the actual and estimated values. And finally, like the budget total should be in the order of first income and that expenses. So these are the first, like these are the three changes we need to make to the above, above pivot table to sort of, you know, if the business is very keen on having that kind of table, how do you make that in a toti? We will see now. Okay, so we will go through these three steps as next. Uh, in order to do that, first, we, what we will do is we will simply, well, you know, go to the cube. We have the different dimensions merged in the cube, uh, just so that you know. So what we do is we define the different levels, hierarchies, and measures, and which is simply one line of code, and that's it. You have defined the hierarchies, levels, and measures within the cube. Uh, again, uh, if you have, like, you know, if you're not much familiar with the hierarchies, levels, and cube concept, levels and measure concept in the cube i would suggest you to check out one of our previous master classes uh, for the sake of time i i think i will not be able to cover the details of hierarchy levels and measures here nice so first thing first thing is like sorting the budget type based on the income and that expenses level there are two ways to do it first as we did for the graph chart we can right click on the on the visualization and then we can sort it on the income and then expert uh, uh, expenditure level for example here if i will sort it like this whoops sorry i will sort it recently yeah so you do have the income and then the expenditure values and then accordingly we do have the estimated and actual values and again i can flip these to make it look exactly like that so that's one way of doing things that you know you can simply uh ascend descend like right click anywhere on the it's all very interactive you can right click and then you can get the order wherever you want to if you don't want to do that there is another way to do it what is that is called the comparator function in anaroti so what is the comparator function in anaroti is okay one second let me undo it i will ascend it yeah and then i will yeah so what does the comparator function in anaroti does is the comparator function in anaroti basically defines that for a particular level this should be the order of first member, second member, and hence the particular level should be defined in that particular function. So as soon as I run this cell, uh, you know, the budget comparator function has been defined. And if we try to visualize the cell again, I can simply copy this cell. And if I paste it here, voila. Uh, and if I run it, voila. You see, it has been sorted in the order of expenses and income, and then uh, it has been, oh, I should have pasted it here, sorry, my bad. Yeah, it should have been here. Uh, anyways, yeah, so basically it works in the same function of income and expenses, and then you can sort it like the way you want it to be. Nice. So the second thumb is like the aggregation. So basically when you saw the rows in the original table, they had the difference between the income and expenses. Here we do have the sum. So we to apply a very simple trick, we simply uh, multiply the expenses by minus one, wherever we have the budget type as expense, and then it will give us the estimated and actual, like real estimated and actual values. So we define two new measures, which have like aggregation based on the where budget type is expense and you multiply it by minus one. Again, I'm not going into the details of aggregation because I'm going with the assumption that, you know, you have some tidbit familiarity about aggregation. If not, 
I would like to, you know, uh, welcome you to check out the previous master classes. So I run the cells. I have these measures being defined now. And then uh, what we can do is now we can simply uh, drill down on the sub levels and we have the negative values should be coming in uh, through this. So in order to drill down the uh, sub levels, what we will do is we will simply take the actual and estimated measures we just created. So I'll select the actual measure, estimated measure. And then each of these rows should be the budget type. There you go. And then you, I will I will also need to you know go one level down. You can see like these numbers, the expenses have been multiplied by minus one. We do now have the difference. This is what we actually wanted. But I want to deep one more level down. So what, it was, what basically I want to do is I basically want to define subtypes. So I take subtypes from here. I drop it here. And Atoti automatically assigns each of the subtypes to each of the budget type. So you can see the breakup for income, expenses, operating and personal expenses, each single component being you know, given to you ready on a plate and being to be served to the business. Nice, so this has been done. We do have the difference. The data is now sorted. The final thing which rests is creating the difference column, uh, which is very simple. Like whenever you need to create a new measure using two existing measures, you just simply define them. Here we take the difference between actual and estimated values. If you like, you could, it could have been a, a sum of these two values. It could have been a multiplication of these two values, a division of these two values, like whatever you want to have. So that's it. Once we have defined the measure, uh, I have already run a pivot table like this above and we should be able to see it. That's it. So we not only have a table like the one above mentioned, but we do have the ability to, you know, interact with that table and see the details drill down into each of the levels and that is the power of having a cube when you have a data cube you can slice and dice the data whenever you want whichever way you want and all of this is very interactive is very on the fly so you don't need to you know do a lot of coding you can simply drag and drop and play with this data as you want to uh, now, you know, like this is something very personal to me. I am not very big fan of seeing negative numbers in the tables. Like, you know, they don't give that good vibe. So what we are trying to do is we simply replace the negative numbers by brackets. And, you know, it's nice to have some dollar signs everywhere. So what I do is I define three diff like the above measures, but I give them a different formatting so that it looks slightly more nicer. And, you know, whenever you share it in a PowerPoint or something, people kind of don't say wow what's that so <laughs> i have like i uh, made some new measures here you can see like we have the dollar sign being added wherever the numbers were negative i've simply replaced them by the dollar sign in the visualization but actually it's a negative value so you know you can always play with data make it like nice presentable ready for sharing with the business like on no matter which level you're expecting operating now the next part of this particular uh, ex particular exercise was to have the top five categories in operating expenses if you remember so we had like you know top five operating expenses like which were the which had the percentage contribution and the finally the 50% uh, reduction scenario we'll go all through that so we are now on the bottom table uh, just to give you a quick recap like this is the thing I'm talking about. Yeah, these are the things like, so we have done this, we have done this, and we are trying to create something like this now, which is expenses amount and percentage of expense reduction. Okay, let's go back to the uh, to the Jupyter Notebook. Nice. So what we will do is we will try to visualize the top five expenses. And for that, again, session.visualize. Uh, we will create it together. And I guess like you know the trick by now, we just simply have to select here the categories are based on the actual values so we just simply select actual dot sum and we want to you know filter the expenses and then operating expenses so the expenses would be in the budget type we do have expenses and i apply filter now i want the operating expenses so which is the subtype i select here i select the operating expenses and then i apply a filter and then uh, what we want to we want to is to have a category so we select the categories so these are all the categories of 
uh, operating expenses. We don't need all the categories. What we need is the top five categories. So we take the categories column again. We simply put it in the filter. Oops, sorry. We take the categories column. We put it in the filter. We go to the advanced, like you can actually select the few categories if you want, but we don't want that. We go to the more advanced filters. And what we do is we, based on the actual dot sum, which is the total sum, we select the top five categories. You can always select the bottom five categories. You can select the top two, top three. You can just play with this data. Like it's very intuitive and very, you know, friendly, user friendly. So once you have uh, selected, I will apply this filter. So that's it. I do have the top five categories, which are advertising, maintenance, supplies, and taxes and their actual contribution in the expenses, uh, like the dollar contribution in the expenses. Okay, so with Atoti, like, you know, we are using Atoti, it's not Excel, let's go beyond this and we'll try to, you know, go one more level deep. So, but instead of having, you know, top five categories in operating expenses, using a similar approach, we can actually find top five categories in each of the budget subtype. And to do that, there is two ways. You can either take, you know, each budget subtype, filter on each of them, create multiple pivot tables, or simply we can create something what we call as multi-level hierarchy. So in a multi-level hierarchy, what you do is you create a new hierarchy, which has different levels being defined in it. Just to give you a quick example, a multi-level hierarchy could be a geography hierarchy, which has countries, states, and cities. So that will always follow this order. Here we have budget type, budget subtype, and category. So this will always follow this order. And we define a multi-level hierarchy here, which we call budget hierarchy. And we will now try to find the top five categories in each subtype. In order to find the top five categories in each subtype, what we basically do is basically we take the budget categories as rows and we take the actual amount dot sum as the columns. Oops, sorry about that. Actual amount dot sum as the columns. And then you can see that it has like the data has been, you know, taken down all the way to the category level. Now what we want is we want to have the top budget categories. So what we do is we go to the budget categories in the filters because we want to have the top five categories. Again, we go to the advanced filters. And then what we do is we select the categories based on the amount actual dot sum, which is the actual amount dot sum. And then uh, we keep the top five. Right. Okay. Let's keep the top two for the sake of, you know, an experiment here, just so that we understand what I'm trying to do here. So I apply the filters and you will see that for income and expenses, you will see, oh no, this is top one. Okay. This does not look good. Why does this does not look good? I'll tell you why. I was expecting top two, but there are just one. So what happened here? What happened here was whenever I chose the top two categories across actual dot sum, I just chose it like throughout the whole budget dot categories. So that's why I'm getting the top two uh, throughout the whole categories, which is the wages and net sales. But I don't want that. What I want is, is the highest value in each of the budget types and not the overall budget type. So once I select this box, I will get the top two values in each of the budget types. Let's see if it is actually true or not. There you go. So I do have the top two budget types for operating, personal, and income values. And this, this way, you know, you can very easily slice and dice and play with the filters. Uh, imagine, in, like, imagine, like, you know, people familiar with Excel, like, imagine doing something like this. In Excel, you will have to go through the entire pipeline again just to make a very small change. With Atoti, you can do things just like by simply drag and drop. Now, uh, moving on to the next part, which is, you know, I do define a new measure, which is the, now this we are trying to do to find the percentage column. So I'm just creating a new measure, which is the budget type total. Here I define the parent values based on the actual values. And the level I'm choosing is the budget categories and going level up. So that's one level, that's two level up. And when I run a certain visualization, you will see that here I'm getting a sum of 49,630. So what is happening here? And here I was getting not a similar sum. So what is happening here is like, you know, whenever I define a budget total like this, it is taking the sum of total uh, income plus expenses and not the overall values. So it should have actually 33,400, but this is not like the way. To do this, we just have to, you know, inculcate this part where we apply filters 
on the budget type dot true as well and we basically choose the top two top five accordingly uh, it was just like a small tip to basically you know give you that how we can actually find different aggregations like so for example if you want to have percentage of income plus expenses or if you want to have percentage of expenses only or if you want to have percentage of expense divided by uh, income in that particular category of budget so depending on your business requirement you can basically play with it uh, once we have done that uh, the next step for us to do is basically to define the percentage as i mentioned like you know creating uh, new measures in atoti is very intuitive very easily just take two measures multiply divide add play with them as you want here i am creating a new different percentage and i am formatting it again i will run the cell i have already uh, created this kind of a visualization uh, you can see that we do have the percentage of budget for each of the top five uh, business categories and we can see how much each particular is contributing here uh, this percentage is being calculated on the total of income and expenses but actually we don't want to have that we want to have that percentage of expense of that category on that subtype level so it should not be sum of income plus expenses but it should be the sum of the operating person or income not the overall sum so in order to mitigate that what we do is we define something called scope in atoti so scope is basically when you are calculating a measure on a certain level uh, just to give you, you know, a bit of a elaboration on this, if I would have done it on the scope of budget level, these percentage numbers would have been this number divided by the overall sum. And if now we are doing it on the budget, budget category and category level. So again, I define this measure. I improve this measure based on my particular situation. You can play with it. Like, you know, I'm not saying this is right. That is wrong. The only way is that like here the business requires this kind of KPI. So we are trying to translate that KPI into this kind of measure. Uh, even this number in its own way is correct. But this is not what is required. It doesn't like you're comparing apples to oranges here. That does not make sense. So here what makes sense is to have uh, each category divided by the sum of that particular category. So I define the measure again using the scope function. Uh, you can you know if you want to know more about the scope function you can read the documentation of the atoti and then you will get to know more about it now once i have this i can simply see that this was the old measure this is the new measure and you can see now like the numbers have basically uh, updated according to that the only thing which doesn't make sense here is this 167.3 percent so why is it happening uh, because like it's adding up percentage and I like usually we would not like to have percentages being added up So there are two ways to mitigate it first. We simply, you know uh, Right click on the table and we just say that, you know, I want to hide The column sum I can either do that or if I don't want to do that I can simply create a new measure which is the percentage of budget and I put a condition onto that that you know whenever uh, the budget is goes above third certain threshold we just like hide it so whenever you know there is no level for the budget uh, we just hide it so i run it and then i do the session dot visualization again and there you go so you have like you know and it doesn't make sense like you know you cannot add keep adding the subcategory sum to find the overall like income budget type or income type obviously it will go more than 100 so whenever there is no uh, budget type we will simply define it as none and that's you have that's how you have like the sum of each particular category on that subcategory level now we will move on to the last part of the uh, with, uh, of the dashboard which was about you know creating a scenario with 15 percent reduction so there was like x to five expenses how much percentage do they have and then what we will do is we will create like a scenario where we take a 15 percent reduction on that in order to do that we create another measure which is called 15 percent reduction and then uh, what we do is again because we are using atoti we will not stop here we will you know go beyond this we will create different scenarios we will not stop at 15 percent we will create two scenarios with 15 percent and 20 percent and we will have you know a measure called reduction which is the new reduced value and we will create these two simulations in Atoti uh, using those two scenarios. And we will see how much does that have impact on each of the subcategories of uh, each of the sub budget type in each of the categories. So I run these cells and then I do the visualization again. There you go. 
uh, you can see basically that I do have now for each of the categories in each of the budget type, I do have multiple scenarios and we do have all the KPIs for these scenarios. Maybe I can shift it like this. So you can all see. Yeah, there you go. You have 15% reduction scenario, you have a percentage reduction scenario, and then you have the reduction values for each of these signs. So you see like with Atoti, and if I can add like, you know, one more row, 25%, 30%, the, the table will automatically get updated. So with Atoti, you know, it's that simple and that intuitive to basically uh, play with a data set, create scenarios, imagine what if situations, and then basically use it. Uh, our, if you see like this is not the exact table we wanted to have because here we have just taken the reduction value into consideration, but we don't want the reduction value. We want the actual value. So what we simply do is we simply take the actual value and we create another measure. We multiply one minus measure of percentage of reduction, which is base, which basically makes sense that 15% reduction is 85% of the actual value. And then I just simply run this notebook. And with this, you can basically see if I change from pivot to a tree table, I think you can see better. Yeah. So you can see basically like for each of the budget type, budget subtype, you can see the actual sum, the percentage reduction, and then 15% scenario, the 20% scenarios, the base scenario, how are each of these numbers, you know, going in. Uh, just, you know, a quick side note here. If you feel, if you're feeling, you know, a bit lost, like you want to actually try because it happens a lot with me that, if I just see some codes, like I won't really understand. This notebook is live in our notebook gallery. So you can actually access this notebook, try to run like that notebook is even an enhanced version of this notebook. You know, you can go through this cell by cell and, you know, try to run yourself these notebooks with the data and everything. And you will actually see these things work in your own Jupyter notebook. And trust me, like, you know, first time I tried those things, I felt kind of powerful because doing this kind of thing in Excel would have taken my whole day. But with Atoti, like, you know, you can do it in 15, 20 minutes. So uh, that was like, you know, going back to the uh, class, uh, the agendas like, so that was our first agenda to have a dash or to have like a kind of a dashboard to have percentage numbers and to basically create a sin uh, to create like, you know, simulation and scenarios on 15 and 20% reduction. So we have kind of replicated this. Before I summarize these things into a dashboard, let me, you know, quickly show you that uh, one more thing that, you know, initially I was talking about security with Atoti that how with Atoti you can have like enhanced security feature. So this is something which comes with uh, Atoti Plus that, you know, with Atoti Plus, you can have give each user a certain level of credentials that people with this credential will not be able to access data beyond this level, right? On different dashboard levels, application level, wherever you want. So what we will try to do now is, and then like most, many of us actually are not very familiar with, uh, you know, using a new language or Jupyter notebook or whatnot. We still want to stick with Excel. So we have found out a way for this. So you can basically use the cube, the Atoti data cube on which we have played everything and connect this cube to your Excel file. So once you connect your cube to your Excel file, what will happen is your cube will still remain the golden source of truth. And people who want to play with Excel and, you know, if you prefer Excel, like, you know, Excel is your favorite language, you can do everything, pivot tables, graphs, visualizations, everything using that cube. We make sure that the data does not get manipulated, the data remains intact. Uh, let's see how we can actually do that. In order to get that, what we will do is we will try to get a link to the Atoti web application. So we do have a link to the Atoti web application. Uh, so Atoti web application is basically nothing but just a platform on which, you know, you can create different dashboards. You can play and then you can, you know, do various drag and drop and you can create your dashboard, share your dashboards and everything. Uh, what I will do is now I will, uh, okay. Yeah. What I will do now is I will try to create an XML link. So basically this is the link to the cube. And now we will, I will open a new Excel file in my machine. Like this is just like coming out of the blue. And then this file, as you can see, what I will do now, I will go to the data in this Excel file. I can get that data from a particular database. I can get from analysis service, which is Atoti. Our server is basically the XML link. You can either use Windows authentication or if you have a Toti Plus license, you can give your 
credentials which will know which user it is and hence give him you know ex allow or deny him the access uh, i'm not using the authority plus version so i will simply leave these things blank i will not use my windows authentication i will go into the next there you go we have the budget cube it's coming from authority i go to the next and then i finally click finish and as soon as i do okay what i will have is i will have something like this which is sort of a nice looking pivot table in excel and then you know we can play with this table let's try to take a few values here let's try to take for example uh, actual dot sum values uh, sorry actual dot sum values estimated dot sum values percentage reduction of 15 percent reduction of budget and then we take this scenario using the budget category and then maybe another simulation right so you can just like play with this data find out what's the underlying data everything like you know it, it, it's like a normal job it's like a normal excel workbook with making sure that the actual data like for example if i would have deleted this in normal excel i have done these kind of mistakes but with the it will never happen and you can even go further like you know have any oops sorry sorry yeah you can go further have different kind of uh, graphs based on this thing for example here i'm creating a graph like from this thing all this making sure that right users have access to the right kind of data set and also uh, the golden source of data remains intact uh, i would like to you know invite you to play with this on your own and then see how you can actually connect excel with the atoti data store now i'll go back to my jupyter notebook uh, and then i will show you the dashboard so this was the this was the objective we were trying to achieve for today oops sorry budget overview that's it so as you can see we do have the dashboard in atoti which is like the dashboard which was coming from excel file the advantage of using atoti is like this dashboard is very interactive you know you can zoom in zoom out of certain areas uh, you can deep dive like you can see uh, it's very interactive you can see subtypes subtype sum you can play with this kind of an uh, pivot tables see those numbers if you want you can actually drill through on a particular number and see where these numbers are coming from and hence like it's very interactive very intuitive and again you can share this kind of a dashboard with your teammates as long as they are on the same link for example if i copy this place in a new incognito tab I hope you can see this and voila, uh, you can actually see the dashboard. I'm not sure if my incognito tab is being showed. I think it is. So there you can like, you know, simply share it with anyone on your network and like all of this with the access control, whether they are actually intended to see it. It's collaborative. It's very, you know, uh, conducive for agile kind of environments. For example, as soon as I get this dashboard, I can make some changes to it. You know, I can select this widget. Uh, make some you know different uh, changes to it for example here i'll have budget subtype being added yeah i can play with this dashboard as i want to i will leave this and then i will go back to the original oops sorry i'll go back to the original dashboard so uh, we have completed like the two objective for today connecting at, uh, excel with the toti and then also connecting uh, you know and also sort of migrating an excel uh, dashboard into a total dashboard seeing the advantages of a total dashboard and like seeing how you know what are the different ways of replicating excel things into a and migrating excel things into a now so we do have some time we can like you know very quickly touch upon this last topic what i will now try to do is i will now try to load a different cs i will you know i will run some cell as i'm speaking and you know i'll tell you later what i'm trying to do so what we will try, we will now try to do is we will try to load a different CSV file, which is like the semi envel file. And then what this file will do is basically this file will uh, sort of, uh, you know, read a locally stored CSV file. Maybe I think I can show you that file as well. Yeah, there you go. This is the file I'm taking into consideration here. I have added like, you know, this was like the old file we have taken into consideration. Here I have added the additional column for the period. So the idea behind this exercise is to show that how, you know, with Atoti, uh, how your Excel dashboard can actually get evolved over time. 
and then as new data comes in you don't have to repeat the whole pipeline you can just keep adding appending the data into your excel file and the dashboard and the visualizations all of those will update themselves automatically so uh, uh, we do have this csv file which is, has been you know loaded into toti it has data from months 1 through 6 uh, which is similar to the data we had uh, what i did was i simply replaced the old budget table with this new budget table and i sort of redid whole the calculations as i was speaking and uh, towards the end what i have done is i have run this watchdog so what this watchdog does is it's trying to uh, watch this file for any changes as soon as i make some changes in this file this watchdog will sense it and this visualization and even this dashboard in the toti uh, i think yeah that's i will keep these things open for your reference i'll close this So that's the monthly budget dashboard. So what we will try to do is I will try to you know keep these things open for your reference. They have dotted data one through six months. As it, as soon as I make some changes to this underlying CSV file, this dashboard and the and the visualization here will be updated thanks to the watchdog and Atoti. And just to you know give you a quick insights, in order to turn on real time, you can turn it off in each of the widgets in each of the toggle. And you can actually see that you know how it can uh, work magic for you. So let's try to make some changes in this Excel file. I'll try to move it to the left corner of my screen, if that works. Yeah, I think it should be fine. Okay, so let's try to you know copy some cells, and then I will try to paste them here. And instead of calling the month sixth, I will call it the month July. And I take all of these and I do control D. As soon as I save this file, the watchdog has read the has read the changes, and like this widget, if you can see, has already been updated for the month of July. And then, if you can see a uh, slightly better view, uh, this real time has already been updated for the month of July. Now the, you can see the month of July here in the expenses as well so all of these changes will be made real time you don't need to made you know refresh anything or do anything what i will now do is i will try to goof it up even slightly more and we shall see you know what happens so here i will you know take these numbers play with them oops sorry play with these numbers make them you know disruptive as i like to destroy things <laughs> and then i will and we will see what happens as soon as I make changes, I save this and you see in real time, you don't need to refresh anything. You don't need to do anything. Uh, you can simply, you know, uh, those changes will be reflected in your, oops, sorry. Those changes will be reflected in your dashboards. So this way you can actually connect your, uh, your Excel file with uh, Atoti and update the Atoti dashboards, Atoti widgets. Everything can be updated in real time. Uh, keep, be, keep in mind that you know to do this kind of exercise in a normal world you will have to go through the whole pipeline run the whole pipeline again but with the toti you can do things very intuitively quite simply uh, without much ado okay and then we stop the watchdog i guess we are around time and we have achieved all three objectives uh, before i you know try to summarize this class let me check if we do have some messages in the chat Okay, uh, nothing uh, that needs attention. Okay, so we will, I'll try to, you know, uh, summarize this chat. What I, now what we have done is we started off with, you know, migrating, uh, we started off with migrating a uh, Jupyter notebook. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. We started off migrating uh, Excel workbook into uh, a Jupyter, uh, into a Toti dashboard. We created filtered and sorted visualization in Toti as we wanted to do them, you know, as they were in the Excel workbook. We saw how we can, you know, do various sub sub analysis. We can create scenarios. We can sort various visualization on different uh, methods. We can slice and dice as we want to. We saw how it how easy it was with the Toti. With once you have the cube, all you have is just keep in vision the demand of KPIs and you can get the KPIs very easily. In the second part, we actually saw how we can connect Excel with the Atoti data cube. 
and you know what are the benefits of doing it why would you do why would you connect excel with the auto data cube you can actually have best of both the worlds you can actually have excel working for authority or the other way around and then you can actually see that you your golden source of data remains same and you can use everything which is your familiarity with excel uh, finally we saw real time dashboarding that you know how making changes in data can actually impact your authority visualizations and can actually impact your dashboards and uh, you know everything in real time i guess uh, that was my time uh, if you have you know followed me so far thank you so much for your time and attention uh, i would like you to you know follow us on our social media networks we do have we are a presence on linkedin twitter youtube medium i just showed you our medium page you can see all the videos there and also you can subscribe to our newsletter on atoti.io and you can get all the updates you know various competitions we are organizing everything all those informations they come through our newsletters and um, thank you for your time and that was my time thank you so much